everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Lisa. And in today's video, I'm super excited to be back with another luxury bag review. I feel like it's been a hot minute since I have reviewed my last luxury bag. But if you guys are interested in watching my previous videos, I have one on the Chanel 19, the Dior Caro, the Prada re-edition, and one on the Chanel wallet. But in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Bottega cassette bag. And in today's agenda, I'm going to be first talking about exactly what bag that I have because if you actually go on the Bottega website and type in cassette bag there are so many different styles of cassette bags so I'm going to be describing exactly what size and which cassette bag that I have then we're going to be talking about and going through the features of the bag and what is going to be in it and sort of the wear on the bag and how the size is relative to my body and we're also going to go through what exactly fits in this particular cassette bag and the size then I'm going to be going through what I like and don't like of of this bag and then lastly we're gonna go through whether or not the bag was worth the money so starting with the first point the exact bag that I have is honestly on the website just cassette so there's one called cassette small there's also another like the padded cassette but the one that I have is not the padded cassette the purpose of me getting this bag was to find one that was extremely practical I wanted to get a bag that honestly was a little bit more low-key wasn't very flashy so I actually Actually, out of all the designer brands I didn't want to pick one where the logo was very much in the front I realized that all of the black bags that I had it was always quite flashy I have the Gucci Marmont bag so it has the gold GG logo then I have the Chanel 19 one which also has the Chanel logo and that one was quite big and I was scared to take it with me everywhere I just wanted to bring it to some special occasions all in all I really wanted a bag that was a really good size for every day as well as not as flashy so I could bring it to the most casual places. I pretty much just wanted a very practical everyday bag that was very low key and still high end. The one that I got wasn't the padded one because the padded one I honestly felt like it was way too bulky and it was still quite flashy. The reason why I, I chose this one was because the leather is quite malleable and it is very very thin and it just fits really really well with my body. So if you guys are also looking for exactly which bag this this is this is just the regular cassette it is also not the small because the small is a little bit too small and it didn't fit as many things that I wanted so for practicality purposes I feel like on the website it doesn't even show you the size it just it doesn't have a size but it is the option that just says cassette and it doesn't have any type of flashy gold things around like I've also noticed some other ones on the website where there was like a metal V as one of the strap handles so that is also not the one that I got so just keep in mind that the one that I have is one that I chose least amount of flashy features aka none um, just to keep the vibe of it being super low key. So going through the features of the bag, so the bag itself is very much a shoulder bag. It is adjustable. It has about five of the holes where you can adjust. How the bag comes is that it is strapped onto the last two bottom of the bag. So with the bag, it does not have any type of um, zippers that covers it. So I feel like some people might be bothered by this but honestly after using it for all this month and traveling all over Asia unlike the Gucci Marmont that has a huge hole on the side the flat bag for the Gucci Marmont a lot of stuff can fall off on the side this one nothing has fallen off so that was really really great it is secured by a magnet so not a button or any type of clasp so I actually really like this feature because once again it keeps it very minimal and also extremely easy to grab your things when you're wearing the bag so going into the bag um, if you guys didn't know the cassette bag is actually just long pieces of leather woven together it has this basically this texture just caused by the fact that it's not just one big piece of leather it is pretty much the design is like the leather is woven together so inside the bag this design kind of continues through it isn't like super flat or this isn't just a piece of design or fabric on top this is truly the structure of the bag so even when you're going inside you can actually see tiny little like holes you can see the light going through because it's honestly just long pieces of leather just woven together so inside the bag what I love about it 
is that there's also another piece of a compartment on the inside and this is actually quite large like I love how they didn't just include a very tiny little thing as a pouch on the inside this really stretches from end to end the pouch of the bag and like I said because the bag is naturally just long pieces of leather they actually had to insert another piece of leather in here just to create another area for you to put your things in so this even the zipper as you can see stretches through the entirety of the bag which is something i really like the one thing that i think i would have appreciated to be honest is just like they stamped the top of the bag, I wish they kind of stamped the bottom because then it actually creates another section for you to put your things in that separates from all your other things. I really thought that was kind of like a missed opportunity. They could have just done that. It almost creates three different areas of things to put in, but really it's only two. So the bag itself, honestly, like on the inside, it is actually very, very spacious. But in terms of actual compartments, these are all the compartments that there is. So going through exactly what fits into the bag, you will be surprised at just how much fits into this bag. Just to give you an idea of genuinely how much this bag fits, it fits my really thick card holder that is from Chanel. This is the one that I have reviewed on. And I have all the essentials as well, including my lip gloss, hand cream, tampon, hand sanitizer, obviously, because it's still whatever, um, lipstick and AirPods. So I have all of these things here. And then lastly, because I did this all throughout my trip in Asia, I was even able to fit my vlogging camera in this bag, which was so clutch because I feel like my old vlogging camera, I had to hold it everywhere outside of me, but this one was super low key and I was able to put it in my bag and only pull it out when I need it. I wasn't displaying that I had a camera every single time and just walking with it everywhere. And it was just also super annoying having to carry it by hand. So this also, in addition, fits my camera. And because the bag itself is super malleable, it very much is able to stretch. So I think that even when my bag was a little bit more stuffed with other things, even then this was able to close very well. Thankfully, it doesn't have a zipper because I feel like that way the zipper won't zip and you're still able to close it up very well. And because the leather, especially this particular leather compared to the other, like the padded bag, it was just extremely structured. I feel like I wasn't able to get much use of it or it wouldn't have been as practical as this one right here but with that being said this was able to fit all of my essentials and this made it the perfect perfect everyday bag I was able to just take it with me on just the day-to-day -day things without looking too flashy or too fancy for no reason it's still a very high elevated piece for sure so going into what I like about the bag as I mentioned earlier the purpose of me getting this bag was to find something that was good for every day not too flashy and extremely practical if you guys have also seen my other luxury bag review videos you will know that my biggest priority is practicality like I I just want to look nice but also still be able to do everything like I am just not one of those people that just buys a bag for the looks of it actually except I think I recently bought the Dior wallet on chain but anyway not the point the point is I rarely slash almost never besides that one bag I never get bags that aren't practical because at the end of the day I'm one of those people that I just think that I just really want to use my bags and I'm not the type of luxury bag purchaser that is going to buy bags just to resell it later. I feel like there are a lot of collectors out there that is not who I am. So for that purpose, I honestly think that what I love most about this bag is the fact that it really, really fit all of my personal criteria. At the end of the day, there is no perfect bag for everybody, but there is a perfect bag for each individual, especially depending on what you are looking for, for the occasion or the purpose, etc. And this is why people have different types of bags because it fits different purposes. So for my purpose, what I just love about it is how much it fits. Like it is incredible 
how much it fits. It's not just the size itself in terms of like every company will tell you like this is a 40 liter bag, like whatever. This bag compared to some other bag could also be the same amount of milliliters or whatever that it can hold. But at the end of the day, what differentiates this bag from some of the other ones is the leather because it is so malleable, you can change up the volume of what goes inside better than some other very structured bags that literally cannot be molded into more or less. So this one is really, really good because I think you can have the flexibility of stretching the volume of the bag so you can actually fit more than is actually intended. And then the second thing about this bag is I feel like it is one of those, if you know, you know type of bags. It doesn't just have the Gucci logo uh, spread on there, the Chanel logo, etc. It just, if you know that this is a Bottega bag, you know it is. And for those that don't, then they don't know. I feel like this is definitely something that I wanted for my particular purpose because I was finding that I would be going to some dinners or some casual events and I currently just didn't have a bag that was still elevated, but was able to fit as many things without it looking like, oh my God, what is the occasion? Like, do you really need to be carrying like a bag with you know, the logo just in everybody's faces. So I just wanted something super low key and I feel like this was the perfect brand and the perfect bag for it. I feel like there are still the other styles of cassette that still can look extremely flashy. For example, the cassette bag with the chain, I feel like that was an even elevated, more statement-y piece but I opted for this one and I love, love, love how low key it looked. So moving on to what I don't like about the bag. Personally, I feel like the only thing that I don't like about the bag is I feel like it's one of those, oh, like I hate it, but it's also one of the reasons why I love the bag. Cause as I mentioned earlier, what I like about it is the fact that the leather is so stretchy, but honestly, one of the cons to this bag is that the leather is a little bit more scratchable than some other ones. Not even scratchable, but definitely because of how malleable the leather is. When I got my bag and I was inspecting it, I noticed some creases here just in the front and I was having the longest debate if I should go all the way out of my way to wait until I return back to Toronto because I got this bag in Hawaii. Wait until I return back to Toronto to switch up for a new one. But in the end, I ended up just pulling it out and using it in Asia. After using it for a full month, I came back and honestly, I've noticed way more of these marks. Like, I don't wanna say they're scratches, but they definitely look like something in between like a scratch and like a little crease. But now it's kind of like almost, not all over, but it definitely, is a little bit more around the area where it's like against my waist. But I think that if you are buying the bag for practicality purposes, I think this was honestly going to happen anyway, which was actually one of the reasons that made me decide to just keep the bag because when I had asked my mom and when I showed her the bag when I arrived in Taiwan, she's like, honestly, Lisa, like, let's be real, the type of person that you are, and the way that you use your bags, like you're gonna collect way more scratches anyway. So why bother waiting until you get back to Toronto and switching up the bags? So anyway, she ended up convincing me to just keep it. And I think that um, if you are gonna be someone who buys this bag, you need to be realistic with yourself and really ask yourself, like, are you gonna be one of those people where any tiny little mark or crease or whatever it is, it's gonna really, really bother you? Because if so, then I personally don't think that this is the bag for you. But at the same time, I also don't think that this is one of those collector bags where you buy for the sake of holding on to for it to go up in value you later. This is not an Hermes bag or a Chanel plastic bag. I honestly think this bag is meant to be used and all the benefits of what this bag comes with, it all points to having the bag being used. So I feel like if you are going to be someone who buys it, I really hope that you're really keeping in mind that this is something that you're buying to use for yourself anyway. So long story short, the only thing I don't really like about the bag is really the leather, but I feel like it is also the leather that makes me like the bag. So honestly, 
at the end of the day, get this bag if you're gonna use it. I feel like if you're really not gonna use it, I think there's a better bag to buy as a collector's item. So the last point that I want to talk about is, was it worth the cost and also where I got this bag and how much this bag was. So the bag itself is $2,900 USD and I believe in Canadian, it was over $3,000 Canadian. But because I purchased it in Hawaii, I didn't realize how much money I saved from this bag. So the total cost that I spent on this bag, and I will leave a screenshot here, is about $2,500, including tax. So buying in Hawaii is so worth it because first of all, compared to buying it in mainland USA, which is basically not in the island of Hawaii, if you buy it in mainland USA, you're gonna pay the $2,900 plus whatever the state tax is. But because in Hawaii, they're really trying to encourage consumers to go to Hawaii so all the luxury products are already marked down at a discount and this is known if you're going into luxury stores in Hawaii they always tell you the Hawaii price is already taken into consideration when they tell you the price or they'll tell you like this is the original price and this is the Hawaii price and usually the difference is about 10 to 15 percent I feel like this was so worth it because also in Hawaii the tax rate is quite small it is about 4.5 percent so in total I feel like the retail price of this bag that I had spent on it was about 2400 something dollars um plus the 4.5% in tax, which ended up being about 2,500 something dollars compared to $2,900 plus tax in USD and 3,000 something dollars in Canada plus 13% tax if you also live in Ontario. So another place I think would have been super worth it to buy this bag as well is if you buy in Europe. But at the end of the day, I know sometimes some people do not have the luxury of traveling to buy your luxury bags. So hypothetically, even using the price point of $2,900 USD or over $3,000 Canadian to purchase this bag, do I think this bag is worth it? Honestly, when I think back on how much I spent on the Dior Caro bag, in terms of cost per wear, I genuinely think this bag is going to get so much more use than all of the other luxury bags. If you consider from a cost per wear perspective, um, even the Dior Caro bag, it is currently, because prices have raised now, the Dior bag, personally, I absolutely love it. I, th I thought it was so practical. I used it all of summer 2021. If you literally looked at my Instagram from that period or even my YouTube from that period, that was the only bag that I was using all summer. And I think currently the Dior Caro bag in the size that I got, which was the small, which is quite around, it's quite similar to the size of this bag, but I honestly still think this bag fits way more. But for the Dior Caro bag, it is currently priced at $5,000 Canadian plus tax. So I think when you consider that, and this is $3,000 from a cost per wear perspective, definitely this is worth it. However, I feel like another thing to definitely consider is the type of person you are when you are buying a luxury bag. I feel like if I was buying my very first luxury bag, like thinking back to my mentality was when I was buying my very first luxury bag, Honestly, I wanted something flashy because I feel like if at the time it was my first luxury bag, I had, you know, saved up so much money. Like if I was going to buy a luxury bag, I'm like, I, I want the logo on there. You're paying for the marketing, you know, like you can find genuine leather bags for much cheaper if it isn't owned by one of the major luxury brands. So I feel like for some people, I can definitely see why some other brands are still definitely worth it. Or the fact that this is low key could be a factor in your consideration of why it might not be worth it. So I feel like if it is your very first luxury bag, I can totally understand if you want to use your money on a flashier bag or something with the logo showing, because honestly, we all work hard to save up for some of these products. And sometimes you want to be able to justify why you're spending so much money on a luxury bag. So with that being said, I hope that it helps. I honestly, at the end of the day, think that this bag is extremely practical. So I think that if your criteria is quite similar to mine in terms of finding something practical as well as something low key, then I think this is the perfect bag for you. But if you are definitely looking for something flashier, also around the same price range, I definitely recommend you check out some of my other YouTube videos, particularly the Dior Carol bag, as well as the Prada Re-Edition bag. I feel like those two bags are honestly some of the best intro bags out there. In fact, after I had shown my friends the Prada Re-Edition bag, a lot of them 
got that one as their very first luxury bag, but in black. So if you are still looking for your very first luxury bag, definitely check out the Prada Reedition video and also even check out my very first luxury bag purchase and review. So definitely watch that video to help you think about some of the factors you should consider buying your very first luxury bag and also what tips and tricks to look for as well for your very first bag in your collection. With that being said, that is pretty much the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.